Still, I, I'd say he's fresh. He's, he's very fresh. He's very fresh. Too. Speckled trout, they're, they're, they're quite tender. You don't really need to use electric knife. Electric knife is handy when you have these scales like a black drum or a redfish. They're just really hard to deal with. So you just cut right back behind the front pectoral fin. And I like to get my first cut, but then work around the back side of the dorsal fin. I don't like to waste a lot of meat, so I do my initial cut and it gets me down to the spine and then you can work down towards the anal fin. It looks like this trout, I definitely was concerned that it had some roe in it, but yes. you can't always tell when you're fishing. And, uh, Got to eat as well. We got our first trout fillet there, nice and clean. Some people like speckled trout, some people don't. I do, and Jim Bob does not. You know, sometimes I'm on the fence. Like I think it's got. I just really like it fresh. I like it super yes. fresh. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't like to pull it out of the freezer from a uh, frozen bag. No, it is the fish that I like to eat when you don't catch it. Yeah, but it's great when it's fresh. I, I like smoke trout. Katie and I both like smoke trout. Okay, so we got pretty good. I mean, we got nothing but a little bit of spine left, a little bit of guts. That was in the crab trap bucket. You got it, you got it. Nothing goes to waste here. All right. We'll turn that into more food later. Another speck of trout. We'll move on to these gaff top. Gaff top have a rib cage, pretty hardcore. They also have a head that really has nothing to it. So you just got to get in there and work yourself behind the rib cage, past the dorsal fin, and then we get a fillet started. They gotta be pretty big to contain a lot of meat, but like Tom Dunn said, that's a fish stick. It's really clean. Uh, once we wash the blood off, you'll see that it's actually a very fair meat. Real similar to Channel Cat. It's a lot like Channel Cat. Yeah, it's good. You know, every fish has its own unique flavor. I don't really understand exactly why, but the uh, I like the gaff top a little bit better than the freshwater catfish. But a lot of people, freshwater catfish is their thing. I think I've just learned to adapt because it's what's available. Well, I, I, I prefer fishing in salt water, so I've gotten accustomed to eating salt water fish. <laughs> uh, black drum's trying to make an escape. Yep, a lot of people don't know there's actually a freshwater version of that drum. You know the name of it? Buffalo. Gasper Goo. Gasper Goo. Gasper Goo. Okay. I've caught them before. I actually caught Hunter's the biggest one. Hunters cassidy. caught a Gasper goo before at the lake. Yeah, I, I caught one at Cassidy. It was huge. It was huge. I was pretty thrilled about it. And uh, I didn't even know it was a Gasper goo. I just knew that I caught something fresh water that looked like salt water and I wanted to throw it. <laughs> and I didn't. I kept it. I brought it home. It, uh, I caught it in a uh, the cast net, had a Gasper goo and a whole bunch of uh, shad. <laughs> Redfish. Right behind the pectoral fan. Once again, what I like to do is go down. And now with the back. electric fillet knife too. With the electric fillet knife, you're right. And you can use the regular fillet knife, but uh, it just makes it so much easier, especially with these, you know, larger slot reds that have these hard scales. The electric fillet knife just it turns helps it into me butter. Get, it helps me get my initial cuts to get the fillet off. Obviously, I'm not going to take the skin off of the fish with the fillet knife. If I were to take the skin off at all, you know, we, we might just do redfish on the half shell 
we have a habit of doing that because it's easy. It is easy, and you get a great grill flavor because the half shell is like a pan. It's like a pan, and you literally can just char the fish, put butter over it, and let the grill just lick the, the, the back side of the scales with the flame. You get a great char grill flavor, but it doesn't burn the meat because. It's protected by, you know, obviously I'm using an electric clay knife to get through this stuff. It's protected by that. So, well, and there's a good layer of fat on these redfish, too, in between the skin and the scales. That, you know, some kind of special happens when you cook it on the half shell. It cooks up through the meat. It really is. Cooks and it from underneath, kind of. That does draw into another uh, topic of discussion. A wet marinade for a bigger slot redfish or a bull red isn't always the best way to go because you're going to have to cook the fish forever. It's going to stay moist and it's not going to have the firm flesh texture that you're looking for. It's going to be mushy. This is, this is our first fillet. Clean it up a little bit, wash it. You can see the way I, do, I like to do the uh, electric knife. As I like to get on this back right here and I take it all the way down to the spine. Even a lot of people say, well, electric fillet knife wastes a lot of meat. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing that much come off of there. There's some scales and some blood. Yeah, there ain't much meat left. There's, there's a little bit, but, and I think it, it really kind of boils down to just give it a try. Some people like it, some people don't. I used to hate electric fillet knives. I was one of those that said, Absolutely not. I'm not going to do an electric fillet knife because it, it does waste a lot of meat, but I think I was just... Well, they're probably better now than they were then, too. They, they probably are. The blades seem to be a lot cleaner. I haven't ever sharpened this one. Only electric fillet knife I ever saw as a kid was the one that they would use to cut the Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> that thing lived in a cabinet all year round except for one day. Right. Nobody can say that it was absolutely necessary to have the electric knife with the turkey either. Man, that electric knife does just pull those scales out. That's about 10 or 15 strokes with a regular knife. Right, you really have to work through these redfish. They're armored. Their scales are like armor. Black drum's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. It's terrible. We're hoping he's young enough and small enough that he doesn't have any worms in him, but... You guys may know a lot of times these guys have worms. Yeah, sure sure Alright, we're through the scales. And I mean, that's a rough cut. A lot of times, what you can do is you can take your knife up underneath the scales. You can see how cleanly it pulls those off. But I want to get a good starting point. I can kind of work my way through after I get my hatchet through the side of the gills. So Jim was telling me off camera there that you almost always find at least a worm or two when they're this big. Typically they're in the tail. Sometimes you know when they're not edible is when you find them past the tail. But um, the worms are parasites for the fish. They're, they're not a species of intestinal parasite that bothers humans. It's just unsightly. Well, and the fact that as they eat the fish, they defecate where they are and just create bacteria. Okay. With the black drum, they also have a hellacious uh, rib cage. You know, we gotta kinda cut around that. I'm not gonna cut, try to cut through it because we're not gonna use the rib meat. Now, some people say that black drum, uh, the larger black drum, you can smoke the ribs. I've heard of that a few times. One of these days, I'll try. I'm just not brave enough to catch it huge black drum and expect it not to have intestinal parasites or worms. Uh, actually, it, so I, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not that intrigued. Maybe one day. Not that hungry either. I think Bear Grylls might do it. Look at it peel right off the ribs. Yeah, we just we can't. It's hard to cut through those ribs, so we'll just leave them alone. Well, it's traditionally you would cut that fillet with the ribs on it, then trim that part out. That part will still get trimmed out, but the ribs are already gone, so it's a lot easier to see where to trim. Yep. So we're looking for uh, 
looking for worms here and what I thought I saw as a worm is actually muscular tissue. It's filament. It's filament, yep. Sometimes people don't like the filament because it makes the uh, fish a little bit chewier. Well, in that case, you fry it and it is much more tender. And, uh, look clean? Yeah, it does look green. It's clean looking black drum? Yep, so. Wow. The, uh, the worms will actually have large opal shaped head and they call them spaghetti worms because the worm just kind of goes all throughout the meat. This does not have that. So we're, we're doing good. <laughs>